This is section 8.3, part 2. We're still talking about the polar form of complex numbers. Next, we're going to talk about multiplication and division of complex numbers. If you have two complex numbers written in polar form, then multiplying and dividing them actually becomes very easy, whereas multiplying and dividing complex numbers in complex form is more arduous. So to multiply two complex numbers together, you multiply the moduli and you add the angles. To divide two complex numbers, you divide the moduli, but you subtract the, the um, angles. Let the first complex number in a problem be 2 times cosine of pi over 4 plus i sine of pi over 4, and let the second complex number be equal to 5 cosine of pi over 3 plus i sine pi over 3. Find the product and the quotient of those complex numbers. So to find the product, all I have to do is multiply the moduli together, so 2 times 5 is 10, and then I'm going to add the angles. Pi over 4 plus pi over 3 is 7 pi over 12. And really you only have to do it once because the answer that you get for the first angle is going to be the same that you're going to have for the second angle. Now let's divide. When we divide them, we divide the moduli, and we'll just leave this as 2 over 5. But now we're going to subtract the angles. So when I subtract in this order, pi over 4 minus pi over 3, I get negative pi over 12. We'll come back to that in a second because we're not going to leave it. When we were talking about identities in trigonometry, one of the things we ran across was that the cosine of the opposite of an angle is the same as the cosine of that angle. For example, if you wanted to know what the cosine of negative 30 degrees is, it would be the same answer as the cosine of positive 30. Because negative 30 is in the fourth quadrant, 30 is in the first quadrant, and cosine is positive in both quadrants 1 and 4. However, if you wanted to find the sine of the opposite of an angle, that would be the same as negative 1 times the sine of the angle. The reason is because negative theta would be in quadrant 4, its sine, S-I-G-N, would be different from the SIGN in quadrant 1. So in order to account for that, you just stick a little negative sign in front of the sign. So down here, we're just going to change this to the cosine of pi over 12, because the cosine of negative pi over 12 is the same as the cosine of pi over 12. But we're going to put a negative 1 in front of the sign. I just changed this to a minus sign. So I get 2 fifths cosine of pi over 12 minus i sine pi over 12. When we talked about raising binomials to powers, the binomial theorem, when we talked about sequences and series, we talked about something called Pascal's triangle, which was a way that we used to expand binomials. And it could get a little time consuming. Well, you could do the same thing to expand complex numbers because they're binomials. But since we now know how to write a complex number in polar form, to expand it to some exponent becomes much easier. Forgot my n. In order to raise a complex number to some exponent n, you're going to find the modulus and raise it to that power. And then you're going to take that number n, and you're going to multiply it by the angle. It actually makes expanding complex numbers 
much simpler. Let's find the value of 1 half plus 1 half i to the 12th power. Now first we're going to turn just the complex number part into polar form. So first I have to find r, which is 1 half squared plus 1 half squared, which is 1 fourth plus 1 fourth, which is the square root of 2 fourths, which is 1 half, which is 1 over the square root of 2. Now let's find out what the argument is. Tangent theta is 1 half divided by 1 half, which is 1, which means that theta must be pi over 4, which is fine because this complex number is in quadrant 1. So the complex form must be 1 over the square root of 2, cosine of pi over 4, plus i sine of pi over 4. Now we have to account for the fact that we want to raise it to the 12th power. So what we're going to do is we're going to raise the modulus to the 12th power, and then cosine of 12 pi over 4 plus i sine of 12 pi over 4. And then we're going to simplify. 1 over the square root of 2 to the 12th power, that's going to be like 1 to the 12th and the square root of 2 to the 12th. Square root of 2 to the 12th is 2 to the 6th, which is 64, and 1 to the 12th is just 1. So it's going to be 1 over 64. 12 pi over 4 reduces to 3 pi. I can find the cosine and sine of 3 pi. If you think about the unit circle, 3 pi is over here. So the cosine of 3 pi must be 0, sorry, it must be negative 1, and the sine of 3 pi is 0. So I get 1 over 64, negative 1 plus 0. So the answer is negative 1 over 64. Now, will you always have an answer that simplifies to a number? No. Sometimes you're going to have to leave it in this form. But if you can simplify it, you should try. What if instead of, a, of expanding a complex number to an exponent, I want to take a radical of it? Well, if you're dealing with a complex number in polar form, even though this was a lengthy process, it wasn't difficult. Being in polar form makes this problem a lot simpler. So for any complex number in polar form, to take the nth root of it, you'll take the nth root of the modulus. And then for the angle, you're going to add 2 pi, 2 pi k and divide by the number of the root index of the radical you're taking. And then you're going to start by plugging in 0 for k, and then 1 for k, and then 2 for k, and so on and so forth. Well, how many numbers are you going to plug in for k? That depends on the root. If you're taking a cubed root, you'll plug in the first three numbers, 0, 1, and 2. If you're taking a fifth root, you'll plug in the first five numbers, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Now this does get kind of lengthy if you're asked to take a large root. So I'm going to restrict you to just doing two or three roots and calling it a day. Let's find the sixth root of z equals negative 64. Now, that's really the polar coordinate, negative 64 plus 0i. So if you're wondering, well, where was the i? It's there. You just didn't see it. So the modulus is negative 64 squared plus 0 squared, which is going to be the square root of whatever 64 squared is, which is going to end up giving you 64. The argument, however, since negative 64 would be graphed on the negative x-axis, that angle measurement is where pi would be. So theta must be pi. So our polar form is z is equal to 64 cosine of pi plus i sine of pi. Now let's find our roots. We're going to start with 
k equals 0. So the way this works is you're going to do 64 to the 1 6th power. Make that a bracket. Cosine of pi plus 2 pi times 0 over 6 plus i sine of pi plus 2 pi times 0 over 6. Well, 2 pi times 0 is 0, so you end up with the 64 to the 1 6 power, which is 2. Cosine of pi over 6 plus i sine of pi over 6. And you may simplify that, or you can leave it like this. I am not particular. If you want to simplify it, then pi over 6 is square root of 3 over 2. And sine of pi over 6 is 1 half. And when you multiply these both by 2, you get the square root of 3 plus 1i. Now let's do k equals 1. So we're going to get 64 to the 1 sixth again, which we already know is 2. Cosine of pi plus 2 pi times 1 over 6 plus i sine of pi plus 2 pi times 1 over 6. Well, that's going to be 2 times cosine of 3 pi over 6 plus i sine of 3 pi over 6. And 3 pi over 6 reduces to pi over 2. I should probably write the uh, cosine part plus i sine of pi over 2. And pi over 2 is 90 degrees, and the cosine of 90 degrees is 0, and the sine of 90 degrees is 1. So you get 2i as your final answer. Even though we're supposed to find the six roots, we're only going to find the first three, because otherwise this starts to get to be kind of boring, because you're just doing the same work over and over again. So the last one we're going to do is k equals 2. So w2 is equal to 64 to the 1 sixth cosine of pi plus 2 pi times 2 over 6 plus i sine of pi plus 2 pi times 2 over 6. So that's going to be 2 times the cosine of 5 pi over 6 plus i sine of 5 pi over 6. The cosine of 5 pi over 6 is negative square root of 3 over 2, and the sine of 5 pi over 6 is positive 1 half. So when you multiply both of those terms by 2, you're going to get negative square root of 3 plus i. And I just found the first three re sixth roots of this complex number, although technically we should find w3, w4, and w5. To solve an equation using the nth root formula, so to solve an equation like z to the 6 plus 64 equals 0, you just solve it like you would any other algebra equation. But once you get to this point, z to the 6 is equal to negative 64, what they're actually asking you to do is to find the sixth root. of z equals negative 64, which we actually just did in the previous problem, so I'm not going to do it again. But that was, that's what this problem means. So you're not actually doing any other work other than what we just did for finding roots of a complex number. However, if you have an equation, the first thing you would do is you would solve for the term with the z. Don't actually take the sixth root of negative 64 because this is not like a regular algebra problem. This says that a complex number sixth root, I want to find if the complex number is negative 64. And that's the end of section 8.3.